So probably the first time you went fishing and you really didn't know what to throw, one of the first things that you picked up was a Texas rig. And it is one of the most common baits out there, but there's really not a lot talked about it. It's just a simple rig, but there's a lot more that goes into it than just a weight and a hook. So today I want to break down everything that I do for it that is going to drastically change how you fish it and where you fish it. So why would you fish a Texas rig? A jig is more compact, it's easier to fish, you don't have to worry about the weight, anything like that. But a Texas rig shines in different situations than a jig does. I like a jig up until the spawn. Once the spawn hits, then I really start to like to throw a Texas rig more because it has a faster fall rate. I can change more with it. And what it really allows me to do is have a little bit more involvement in the bait that I'm throwing. If there's a lot of guys fishing in an area, a jig is a bulky bait versus a Texas rig is just the soft plastic that you put on there and the weight that you're throwing. And it also allows me to change that weight a whole lot faster and be more efficient at what I'm fishing. So if I'm fishing and I think I want my bait to go a little faster, I don't have to try to find a whole new jig. I can just put a different weight on there and I'm good to go. You can you know, fish the same setup, which is really, really nice. It also goes in and out of cover a whole lot easier. It's a more slender profile bait, so it tends to get more bites than a jig typically would, especially if you're on a fishery with smaller fish. This is where a Texas rig really shines because it doesn't have that big pulsating skirt on there. It is just a more finesse style bait. Now, if you want to put a skirt on there, they make a punch skirt that you could throw on there, and that'll help get you a bigger bite. That will allow you to fish in heavy cover easier, but just have a bulkier presentation as a whole. So in today's world, it's probably not a common fact anymore that a Texas rig is more than just how to rig a bait. When everybody talks about how they rig a swim bait or how they do this with a weedless hook, you know, or, you know with an EWG offset hook, everybody just goes, oh, I Texas rig it. Well, it's actually an, a rig. Like, there's actually a way you could do that. That's with a tungsten or a lead weight. I guess you could use brass, too. But, and then a hook. And there's a little bit more that goes into it. But I just want to bring up that it's not just a way to rig a soft plastic anymore. It's an actual technique. And so, like I said, let's talk about how you rig it first off. First off, it is a hook with a weight. And there's one thing that you can add to it, and that is a peg. But we will dive into the peg later. But let's first talk about how you rig this sucker. So the first thing I want to talk about is there's two types of hooks that you can predominantly use. You can use the first one that I have rigged up here, which is an EWG offset wide gap hook. And you can also use a straight shank flipping hook. So those are the two options that you have. Obviously there's like worm hooks and whatnot that you could go with. But if you're flipping, this is what you're typically going to start with. And what are the differences in the two? The differences in the two is how you rig the bait. You know, when you rig one on here, like you just saw on the offset worm hook, what it is is that bait is a little bit more weedless. The hook tends to not poke through the plastic as much. The hooks tend to not be as strong. You know, some of these flipping hooks are made out of some heavy gauge wire versus some of these offset worm hooks. They're a little bit thinner wire. And what you have is that bait is a little bit more weedless right there. And that hook, like I said, tends to not poke through as much, so you might get away fishing it through. But in my personal opinion, I miss fish on this because with that, when you set the hook with that, it's got to come up and out. Versus with a flipping hook, it just goes out. And so one thing that I want to talk about is when you could throw both. So when I like to throw the offset hook is if I'm flipping brush piles or if I'm flipping really light Texas rigs something that I'm really not trying to send that hook home. I'm really just flipping when I feel I got a bite. I'm using a medium heavy seven foot rod that'll load up. I can just lean on them. That's when I'm going to use that. If I start getting into flipping heavy cover, that's when I want to go to a bigger straight shank flipping hook personally. And the difference is when you set the hook with this and you hook them, you, you pretty much, you got them. Even if they get stuck in some stuff, the way that hook is designed, it kind of gets up in there and pegs them. Versus, if I hook one with a flipping hook, I don't want to ever let off the gas. Meaning, when I hook them, I am going to reel, and I am going to probably boat flip that fish. There's probably not going to be any in between. I'm going to keep it coming. So those are the two different hooks, and those are kind of the two different scenarios in which I'm going to use them. The other thing we can talk about is how I tie a knot to my hook because that's actually more important than a lot of people might think. You have pretty much every knot in the world, then you have a snell knot. 
And so every knot in the world, I think I have a Palomar knot or something right here. When that hook comes down or the weight comes down, see that hook doesn't move. Versus if I tie a snail knot, that weight is going to come down and you see how it kicks that hook straight out. It's either going to kick it out or it's going to kick it down. Either way, what happens is when you go to set the hook on that fish, it kicks that weight down and it's either going to hook them straight through the bottom jaw or it's going to hook them straight through the roof of the mouth. And I use those two specifically how I talked about when I use the offset worm hook versus the flipping hook. The flipping hook, when I'm fishing heavier cover, I like to use that snell knot versus if I'm using an offset hook or a lighter Texas, or a Texas rig, I will go with just a regular San Diego jam knot, which is my favorite, or a Palomar knot, whatever your other favorite happens to be. But those are the two ways you can tie a knot to it. Now probably one of the other most commonly asked questions when it comes to a Texas rig is when do you put one of these little babies on there? When do you peg it and when do you not peg it? And that goes to depends on what you're fishing. If I am flipping isolated laydowns, they're really sparse wood for flipping stumps. If I'm flipping hardcover basically, I'm probably not that worried about it. Once the laydowns start to get a little thicker, then I'll add that peg. But what happens is if you don't have a peg, that weight is going to hit the bottom way before your bait does. So when you flip it in there, your weight will come down first, it'll hit the bottom, and then your bait will all be, up, be all the way up here. So if I am flipping really soft bottom where there's not a lot of vegetation, I'm going to do that because what that does is that weight is going to hit and put up a little dust cloud. That bait will be up here, and then after that fish has kind of come in, I can hop it, and it gives that bait more of a natural fall. But specifically, if I'm fishing hardcover that's isolated or anything that I'm not worried about my bait going in and out, that's when I'm going to not peg it. Versus when I peg it is when I'm going to be fishing heavier cover where that bait is going to have to be going in and out of something. Especially if I'm flipping grass, if I'm flipping heavy laydowns where there's a lot of stuff going on there. That is going to be the difference of when I peg it versus when I do not peg it. So when you fish a Texas rig, there's all kinds of different baits you can use. And the end is limitless. You could throw pretty much whatever you want, but there's really three styles that I'm going to fish. You're going to have your cross style baits, you're going to have your creature style baits, and then you have your Sanko style baits, your stick worms, or just finesse worms in general, whether that be a, a curly tail worm, a ribbon tail worm, or that be a Sanko style bait. And each have their own different way they play. The most commonly fished is probably going to be a Sanko and some sort of cross style bait. Those are probably the two that I see most often that probably you guys do the most. And the difference is I like to throw a Sanko or a stick, right, stick bait around the spawn. Anytime I know those fish are spawning, that's going to be a really good time for me to throw that or pressured situations. When I know those fish have seen everything in the kitchen sink, that's going to be when I'm going to throw a worm. Everybody knows about fishing big ribbon tail worms offshore, you know, really fishing brush piles and just ledges and whatnot with a big ribbon tail worm. But creature baits really shine around the spawn as well. And because it's a big intrusive bait, it makes it something that just irritates those fish more. That's going to be something that they don't like it around their bed, so that's why they're going to attack it. So keep that one in mind, specifically pre and post spawn. It's a great time to throw a big creature bait. And the second or the third is going to be your cross style bait and that is kind of just your go to. That's something that you can flip into heavy cover, you can flip it on wood. If you're really not sure what bait to pick up, I go with a cross style bait. I like a Z-Man Goat, Z-Man Helicross, something along those lines. Those are really great options for flipping baits. You can also fish swim baits and all kinds of other different baits. Pretty much anything you can, if it's a soft plastic and you put it on a hook, you can Texas rig it. I've seen guys Texas rig Ned rigs before. There's the, the end is limitless. It's as far as your imagination will go with whatever bait you want to put on there. So there's two types of line that you can fish with this. You can fish, well three I guess. You can fish braid and you can fish fluoro. And you can fish a mix of both. A lot of guys like to go braid to a fluorocarbon leader. And that all depends on what you're fishing. Again, it relays to the size weight you're going to use. Obviously, if you're flipping heavy grass, you're probably going to want to go braid. Not probably. I would definitely 100% go braided line because it's going to saw through that grass and give you a lot more contact. Now, if you're fishing around wood, I would never throw braid. Don't throw braid. For the sole fact that braid has basically a saw blade on it. And for grass, that works great, but for wood, what it's going to do is just going to wedge itself right into that into that wood. It's going to saw through the bark, it's going to get you caught in corners, and you're never going to get that bait back for the most part, especially if you're trying not to spook fish. 
So if I'm around sparse grass, I like fluorocarbon. Pressured situations, I like fluorocarbon. But heavy grass, I'm going to go braid. And wood, I'm going to go fluorocarbon. Now if I'm flipping grass, braid to a fluorocarbon leader can often be a great thing to do, especially if you're up on some of these northern lakes with really clear water. That can allow you to get a couple more bites. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't go below like 15 pound fluorocarbon. Typically I like to put a 20 pound liter or 25 pound liter on it. Something that's really, really strong that I'm not as worried about breaking it because a lot of times with this bait you are laying the wood to them. You are jacking them. Now if you're fishing a uh, highland reservoir and you're flipping a small craw on like an 8 ounce weight or 3 16 ounce weight, yeah, you can use 12 pound test. Use whatever size line you want because you're probably not going to break those fish off. But just be aware of what you're fishing for and the environment that you're fishing before you decide what line you're going to put on your rod and reel. The rod and reel setup for this is pretty simple. You can get away with pretty much two combos. The first is the reel, and I like to throw an 8 2 to 1 gear ratio reel. This is a Shimano SLX. If anybody's followed along the channel, you know I'm a big Shimano guy. And the reason I use that 8 2 to 1 is it just allows me to cover so much more water because the bread and butter of when you're fishing this is you flip it in, you hop it a few times, maybe you drag it a little bit, then you reel it back up. Then you flip it again, unless you're fishing offshore or something like that. The bigger the weight I go to, I will lower my gear ratio a little bit. Like if I'm flipping heavy cover, I'm going to go to a 7 2 to 1 gear ratio reel, but that's it. I'm not going to go any further below a 7 2 to 1. You know, the only time I'm going to do that is if heavy cover and then offshore ledge fishing when I'm making long casts and I'm really doing a lot of dragging. But if I'm just flipping isolated laydowns, that 8-2 to 1 is going to be money. Now the rod and reels that I'm going to use is you can get away with fishing like a 7 foot medium heavy for pretty much 90% of it. That's going to be a really bread and butter rod with these single hook baits. Once you hook them, you got them. It allows you to have time to reel up and really hit them so you don't have to worry about having a super specific action for it. I do like a rod with a softer tip and then like an 80-20, almost like a swim jig rod that I talked about in one of my last videos. If you guys haven't seen it, you should check it out. But like 20% tip, 80% backbone because when those fish pick it up, you don't want to have a super stiff rod that you're going to pull it out of their mouth before you even know that it's a bite. you got to have that time to register to yourself that you're getting bit. And then that 80% backbone is what's really going to allow you to drive that hook home and allow you to put those fish in the boat. So take some of these Texas Rig tips and you put them to use this year. It is a great bait and often one that people completely forget because the jig is just easier to fish. But if you use some of these tips, you will catch a bunch more fish in different situations than you probably ever thought you would. And uh, if you like this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button to follow along with the channel. And check out this video where I break down my swim jig setup. What I wish somebody had told me about a swim jig because it is a phenomenal way to cover bait, especially if you're in some of the same situations that you're throwing a Texas Rig in. But thank you guys so much for watching. God bless and I hope you all I'll take care.